the canal near Salzgitter in northern Germany is a field of ice. Even the icebreaker is reaching its limits. It's minus 15 degrees Celsius. No sooner has the prow broken through the ice than it freezes again behind the stern. I'm accompanying Reinhold Kluse, captain of the icebreaker Wurmer. For 40 years, Kluse has been at the helm of the Wurmer. In summer, it tugs ships in the harbor. In winter, it breaks through ice. But the ice hasn't been this thick for years. Many of Germany's canals and rivers have frozen over. Traffic is still flowing here. And to make sure it stays that way, Reinhold Kluse and André Maia get up every morning at 5 o'clock. But they may have to give up due to the cold. Kluza says he's just heard that the ice is 18 centimeters thick. I ask if that's a lot, and he says yes it is. Ahead of us is the steelworks of the Salzgitter company. The Wurmer has to keep the shipping lanes open for the freighters that bring coal for the factory and pick up steel. Reinhold explains that he's trying to turn around, which is difficult because there's thick ice in front and in back. Andre Maya shows me around the small vessel. He and Kluza have been on board for three weeks straight. Two men alone in the ice. Andre says it's small but warm and cozy. I ask if he always sleeps here and he says that when they're breaking ice they're here night and day. I wonder whether it's not too small for two people. Andre says each man has his own area and his own bed, and it works out fine. With a powerful engine and a reinforced hull, the Wurma plows through the ice. Kluze says that if they didn't have to break up the ice, the big space would be great for skating. But he thinks no one has time for that nowadays anyway. They get their first assignment of the day. The Dutch freighter Drakar wants to get through. The Wurma is supposed to plow a lane through the ice. The Wurma has to get the ship through two sections of the canal. Then another icebreaker will take over. We've made it to the first lock. We don't know how thick the ice is beyond it. I use the chance to get off. I want to know how the crew on the freighter is dealing with the ice. The ship's owner tells me I have to get on board now before the water level in the lock drops again. Kobe Dolaman pulls me on board. She explains that going through locks is dangerous in this weather. The thick blocks of ice in the walls of the lock could drop onto the ship. And continuing out of the lock is tricky too. I get a bit nervous when I see the icicles above my head. I follow Kobe Dolaman back to the bridge. Walking here is very dangerous because there's not much room. There's also a lot of coal dust and everything's covered in ice. I have to watch out. I don't want to fall into the icy water. We're welcomed in the wheelhouse by Zuzi, the ship's dog, and Nico Wildenbeest. He carefully guides the vessel through the ice. Getting stuck now would be a catastrophe. He explains that if they get stuck, they wouldn't be able to leave for the next three weeks. He says it's getting worse, with the ice getting thicker by the hour, and adds that the weather forecast for next week isn't much better. 
the next Woche auch nicht besser wird. Ne? Kobe tells me that the ship and its crew cost 500 euros per day, whether it's moving forward or not. So every day it's stuck is another 500 euros gone. So they continue and take the risk of the ice damaging the big ship. Things proceed slowly, very slowly. Even the pedestrians on land are overtaking us. And then we're stuck. The captain contacts the crew of the icebreaker, and they agree to come back. It's the Drakkar's only hope of getting out of here. The freighter can't move on its own power. Now the wait begins. Reinhold Kruse has to try to get as close as possible to the freighter in order to clear the way. It's a dangerous maneuver, but it's the only hope of getting the Drakkar moving again. The Wimmer breaks up the blocks of ice along the side of the ship. Then it's full speed ahead. And it works. The Drakkar can continue its journey. The Wimmer moves up again to take me back on board. I'm not quite sure how I'll make it across. They pull up alongside, and then I can get on board. But I have to turn the camera off to jump and start filming again when I'm securely on board the Wimmer. Captain Kluze says we can turn back now. We make our way back to port. For Reinhold Kluze, that means more cranking around. It's back-breaking work, and Reinhold Kluze is 64 years old. I ask him if that was stressful. He says yes, and that it isn't what he normally does. I ask if it was dangerous. He explains that if a piece of ice were to crash into his ship, he can't turn the tug fast enough to avoid it. It's moving forward, and it weighs more than a hundred tons. And a collision with a block of ice could tear a huge hole in his hull. Reinhold Kruse spends 12 hours a day at the helm, sometimes longer. He says that if he could, he'd end the day and go to a restaurant to relax and have a beer and a nice meal. And he says he misses seeing other people. It makes him a new person the next day, having seen something else. But he can't do that today. For me, however, the trip is over, and I'm looking forward to my warm apartment. I wouldn't want to trade with the crew of the Wurma. They'll be on duty here in the ice until the thaw finally comes.